your mean, mean pride. Our next video of political geography is going to cover a bunch of terms that come up in this unit. Two of those terms are unitary and federal. Unitary states are generally smaller countries where the capital city maintains all the power, has a strong central government there. They make all the decisions for everybody within the territory. Another example of a political unit is a federal system. Federal systems are usually larger countries like Canada, the United States, Russia, and Brazil. This is where you still may have a strong central government, but they don't make all the decisions. They focus more on like foreign relations, and they allow states or provinces to make decisions for the local inhabitants, such as driver's age, marriage age, and road repairs. A couple more terms for us to look at is centripetal forces and centrifugal forces. Centripetal forces are what brings a country together. It could be the national anthem, it could be the Olympics, or in soccer, the World Cup. A war, a strong economy, a religious cohesion, all of that can bring a country together and unify them. Centrifugal forces are what breaks a country up. That is things like religious dispute. Wars can sometimes also break up a country like Vietnam did to America. Ethnic tension, racism, a lack of wealth that's fairly distributed throughout the country. Usually when we see centrifugal forces, that can lead to devolution, which is the next term we're going to take a look at. Another term we use in human geography is devolution. Devolution is the handing out of more power to a regional area. Usually this is due to ethnicity, that you have a minority group in a country and they want more say in their government, sometimes applying or fighting or pushing to have their own state created. But it can also lead to the breaking up of a state, which is called balkanization, and we'll talk about that more later in the video. Separatism can be also caused by centrifugal forces related to devolution, like we see with the Basque in Spain, where they're pushing to uh, break off of Spain or at least have more power in their government there. Breakup of the Soviet Union is also an example of devolution, where we saw individual republics break off of the Soviet Union based on ethnicity to have more say, to have more self-guidance in their creation of their country, such as the Ukraine and Lithuania and places like that in Eastern Europe. Relating to what we were just talking about, Balkanization is named for the Balkan Peninsula where Greece is located in the countries above it. There was a country there called Yugoslavia and it broke up because of self-determination and that's why we call it Balkanization. It all started way back with the Ottoman Empire as it was starting to just get old. It started to collapse around 1817 and a lot of those areas tried to break off of it for self-determination. Well, the Ottoman Empire lasted about another 100 years until about 1912, where the areas started to break off and places like Serbia began to form. Well, after World War I, the area was forced to live together in a place called Yugoslavia. All the ethnicities in that area were forced to live under one government. However, in the 1990s, we see Yugoslavia break up and it starts to form all these little republics, as you can see in the map. And that's why we call it balkanization, because one country are breaking up into many countries based on self-determination. Our last topic we're going to talk about is supranationalism. Make sure that you do note the spelling. It's not supernationalism, and it's not supernaturalism. This is supranationalism. It's when two or more countries form an alliance for a specific purpose. And usually it's one of three purposes, economic, military, or political. An example of a political alliance is the UN or United Nations and the EU, the European Union. An example of a military alliance could be in World War II, the Axis and the Allies, or during the Cold War, it could be NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Economic examples are OPEC, NAFTA, and the World Trade Organization. So those are all examples of each one of the main categories. Today, 
The main reason we see any kind of economic alliance is for economic reasons.